Good morning, Ate Marie. Welcome back to Stories um, with Mr. Tim. Story time with Mr. Tim. And this story is called Whatever Next. But before we get to that story, I hope you enjoy yesterday's tongue twister. I really love reading um, Dr. Zeus. Um, the children always um, get a bit of a laugh when I try to do the fox and socks. And, and oh my gosh, the tongue does get twisted on that one. Uh, we might try that one next week as well. Now, before we get into the story, I since this story is, um, you can see, it's a bit of a moon and bits and pieces, I thought I'd tell you a, um, a, a really interesting fact about uh, Mongolia. So, Mongolia... Think about that. So I want to think. Uh, want you to think about what could be really interesting about Mongolia. And there's lots and lots and lots of open space. So just have, keep that thought in your mind, and we'll read this story. Whatever next. So a nice place to have a picnic on the moon. Can I go to the moon? Asked Baby Bear. No, you can't, said Mrs. Bear. It's bath time. Anyway, you have to find a rocket first. Ooh. Baby Bear found a rocket in the cupboard under the stairs. He found a space helmet on the draining board in the kitchen and a pair of space boots on the mat by the front door. He packed his teddy and some food for the journey and took off up the chimney. Here's his snacks. Got some food. Whoosh! Out into the night. Where's he off to? An owl flew past. Oh, that's a smart rocket, he said. Where are you off to? The moon, said Baby Bear. Would you like to come too? Yes, please," said the owl. "That'd be a good com. Uh, it would be great company for a trip to the moon." An aeroplane roared out of the clouds. Baby Bear waved, and some of the passengers waved back. That'd be pretty interesting on, on a, uh, up in the air, seeing a, a bear in a bot. I mean, in a rocket. On and on they flew, up and up above the clouds, past millions of stars. When at last they landed on the moon. I like it. The box says fragile. The rocket. <gasps> There's nobody here, said Baby Bear. There are no trees, said the owl. It's a bit boring, said Baby Bear. Shall we have a picnic? What a good idea, said the owl. There's a clever owl. We'd better go, said Baby Bear. My bath must be ready by now. Off they went, down and down. The owl got out and flew away. Goodbye. It was so nice to meet you. What a polite owl. It rained, and the rain dripped through Baby Bear's helmet. Oh, no. Home went Baby Bear, back down the chimney and onto the living room carpet with a bump. Stumpf. Mrs. Bear came into the room. Look at the state of you, she gasped, as she led him away to the bathroom. Why, you look as if you'd been up the chimney. As a matter of fact, said Baby Bear, I have been up the chimney. I found a rocket, and we went to visit the moon. <laughs> Mrs. Bear laughed. Oh, you and your story, she said. Whatever next? Oh, it must be bedtime next. Now, it's a bit of a short story today, but I like that story because it has an opportunity to use a bit of imagination. And for a bit of a challenge, if you want to make your own rocket, 
that would be brilliant and if you could um post some pictures of you and your rocket on mr uh, story times with mr tim oh my gosh that'd be so exciting but you know you can i like the what was it the colander or the sieve that he uses the helmet the gum boots the space boots and oh you can make all sorts of wonderful things and i'm pretty sure that that can be considered an art project for school <laughs> and if you take lots of photos of it and um, send it to your teacher that'd be brilliant so now Going back to Mongolia, Mongolia has got lots of um, uh, wide open spaces and we're talking about the moon, it was a bit boring, there's not many people on the moon. But guess what? Mongolia is one of the most sparsely populated countries in the world. So sparsely means not very many. So Mongolia on average only has four people every square mile. So that's a 2.6 square kilometers. So that is like, that, that is like you'll be wandering for a long time before you bump into somebody especially because there's a lot of people in the cities but when you go out in the countryside you'll be there will be not many people at all so i hope you found that pretty interesting so thank you for listening and we'll come and do another story tomorrow see you tomorrow